Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas and this is a new five part video series on how to get up and running with the basics of WordPress. Okay, so there are a ton of training series out there, both free and many of them paid for how to get up and running with WordPress. Now, as somebody who has been developing on WordPress for many years now, nearing a decade, I thought what would be helpful is if I just uh, used this channel and a five part video series to kind of get you up and running with the basics of WordPress. Now, one of the many problems I've had with so many of the different training series out there is first answering the question, is WordPress right for you? Because I can't tell you the number of times either I or a number of people who I have talked to in the past have gotten halfway through a training course only to discover that there might be a better solution out there for them. So this first video is meant to actually answer the question, why WordPress? So that you can help decide quickly for yourself if WordPress is the right platform for you. But before we do that, I just wanna give you a quick idea of what this video series is meant to help you accomplish. The goal by the end of this series is for you to have a basic understanding of what WordPress is, what it does do, some of its features and functionality. We're not going to be going too far out into the weeds with a lot of the themes and plugins and extensions and development and code and all the things that you can do with WordPress. And so we're going to focus on the basics, on the fundamentals. You can kind of think of this as your WordPress 101, your WordPress introduction, so that you can choose where to go from there. Now, since we're going to be answering the question in this video as to why WordPress. If you're already sold on WordPress, if you're pretty sure that WordPress is the direction you want to go, you just want to learn the fundamentals of WordPress, feel free to skip this video, jump on to video two, where we're going to be diving into WordPress itself. If you're not sure, on the other hand, or if you just want to explore the idea or the concept of WordPress, let's go ahead and dive into that. Okay, so the great news of today's digital age is the fact that just about anybody can start a podcast, or you can start a YouTube channel, or you can start a blog. The problem is where that information is housed, who controls it, and where it is stored. Let's use Facebook as an example. There are some accounts that have uh, garnered tens, if not hundreds, sometimes millions of fans who have connected with them on Facebook. However, after some uh, some changes or some tweaks or to some adjustments as to the reach that people were finding with that particular platform, and again, this ebbs and flows. However, what people were finding is that they were seeing a drop off of engagement rates. This has happened uh, many times. Sometimes the first few times you go live on Facebook, you'll see a much larger audience than maybe the 10th time that you go live. And these things, again, will ebb and they will flow. At the end of the day, as a content creator, your goal is just to reach your audience. However, the problem with a platform like Facebook or any social media platform in existence, and even this one included, is that they, at the end of the day, control how much and to what depth and to what length you're able to actually interact and reach your audience. So one of the benefits, of course, of a social media platform is that they're gonna give you extended reach. You're gonna reach a lot more people, potentially, than you would if you were just starting something from scratch. The drawback, of course, is because you are hosting that content, whether it's a, whether it's a video or an audio file or whether it's written content, something as simple as a tweet, that content is being housed and being stored by that social media platform, which means you, the creator, are subject to their content guidelines. Content guidelines, which sometimes can be very clear and in most cases is very ambiguous, leading it to them to the decide your fate, what your audience gets to see and what they don't. So I'm not here to say don't use social media, don't use any of these platforms. I am telling you this on YouTube. They have their pros and they have their cons. However, if creating content is going to be pivotal to your business or to the platform you're trying to build, it is going to be essential that you have a house or a home on the web, a place that you own, that you control, and that 
isn't subject to any content guidelines or algorithm changes of other platforms on the web. That is where WordPress comes in so handy. WordPress itself is free and open source. It's something that you go out and you actually purchase or buy a subscription with a hosting company, and then you install that software on that host. Now, each host may have their own different guidelines for what you can actually publish or what you can and can't, but the great news is that the website itself and the content itself is 100% yours. If you write a blog post, posted on a self-hosted WordPress website, you are the 100% owner of that, even if that hosting company decided to come in, which is exceedingly rare as compared to number of social media platforms, but if a hosting company decided that they didn't like what you were publishing or they changed their guidelines or something of that sort, the great news is that you can just move to another host who was fine with your content. See, the problem with something like, again, Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or any of these accounts is that you can't just move to another Facebook. There's only one of them. So your options are extremely limited. Again, there's pros and cons to both. Pros of that you get that extra reach. The con, of course, is that you lose a bit of the control. Again, to re-emphasize, I am not saying that you should cut off all social media altogether. However, what I am saying is that you should have a home. You should have a place where you can put your blog articles or you can embed your videos. So for example, what I do on my Rightly and Company website is I actually have every single YouTube video I've created on this channel is available at rightly.co. You can search them, you can find them. And in the event that YouTube decided one day they didn't wanna let me continue to create videos or shut me down or anything of that sort, I don't see that happening, but if they did, I have a place where I can just take the videos that I've created, upload, upload them to another platform, and then embed them in the same place on my website. The key is that I have a place where people can go to find that content. Now, if you already have an audience and you want to kind of start to move them towards maybe selling a membership where you get exclusive content, the idea is that you want to be able to get the best of both worlds. Okay, so that's a lot of the theory. That's kind of the ideas behind why you would want a WordPress-based website. Of course, it gives you the control. Now, what a lot of people think of when they think of WordPress is a blog. And while, yes, you can use it traditionally to create a blog, it's no longer the case that you are relegated to written content. You're now able to do a podcast on a WordPress website. You can have a video on a WordPress website. And the functionality really, since it's open source, is pretty much endless. In fact, throughout this video series, I'm gonna be sharing with you a theme for WordPress I personally created that you'll be able to gain access to that'll help you to do a lot of the things that you do on big social media platforms only on a content management system that you own and that you control. Now, one of the trends I've noticed with WordPress, and I think one of the reasons why it isn't quite as appealing, particularly for content creators, is that a lot of WordPress websites and WordPress themes out there today seem to focus more on making something pretty, a block-based builder that allows you to drag and drop and create, you know, carousels and photo galleries and things like that, which have their place. And so I don't think it's been as a platform as appealing for content creators who are looking for a home for their uh, you know, a new home for their YouTube channel or additional video content or even a podcast. I don't think it's been as appealing for them. However, what WordPress was first known for and what it became popular for was publishing. And so in this video series, we're very much going to be returning to that original strength that WordPress had, which was publishing, whatever that medium is, we want to help you do that. So again, don't think that you're going to be limited to these static websites. I think that kind of the day and the age of the digital business card is fading. We're in the age where content really does matter more than what appear, how pretty or how shiny or how many hover effects 
there are in the website. Okay, so that's it. This is just a brief introduction into what we're going to be going through in this video series. I'm really excited about all the different pieces that we're going to walk through. My goal for you, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is that you'll have the basics, the fundamentals down of how to get up and running with WordPress and best case scenario, even have a WordPress website set up and running as a result of this video series. So feel free to ask any questions related to WordPress. You can put those in the comments. Always happy to take a look at those. If you found this video useful, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already so you always make sure that you catch every video in the series. And I look forward to seeing you in that next video. Hey, so I get asked all the time how I make my videos. So I decided to put together for you a free one hour training which I'm calling the seven pillars of effective video. Again, this is totally free. So click the box in the top right hand corner of this video. You can also head on over to rightly.tv slash training. Again, this is totally free. Head on over to rightly.tv slash training.